why are we studying the 12 tribes? Let's uh, review this quickly a little bit. Why study the 12 tribes? The 12 tribes of Israel is very important because you have here a concrete record of the mind of God when he wants to organize a spiritual community. Where in the world will you understand the thoughts of God, the mind of God, when he wants a family, when he wants a community, and when he wants a, a nation, a nation that is revealed in the way that he taught concerning the organization of what is now known as the 12 tribes of Israel, which comprise the nation of Israel. And when we study the 12 tribes of Israel, we find an accurate picture of human condition and God's grace because all the players in the 12 tribes of Israel, they all have issues, sexual issues, hatred issues, anger management issue, rivalry, jealousy issues, inferiority complex issues. They are all present in the mix of the 12 tribes of Israel and yet the Lord organized them. The Lord uh, established his kingdom. The Lord established his nation. So we are trying to plot our way here by studying the 12 tribes of Israel. And it also helps us to understand God's plan, his giftings and anointings and our role and place in God's kingdom. The 12 tribes of Israel represent what is called by some students of intercession as the tribal anointings, the spiritual tribal anointings. Some of us have the tribal anointing of Judah. Some have the tribal anointing of Zebulun. Some are Levites among us, and some are Issachar, so forth and so on. So when we study the 12 tribes of Israel, we have an idea of the church today the body of Christ, then you begin to assess where do I put myself? Where has the Lord called me? Then you assess the tribes, then you have an idea. Um, before we go into the tribe of Isaacar, just a quick interesting overview of the number 12. The number 12 is very important in the scriptures. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 animals named by God in the Bible. There are 12 tribal gems. Very interesting. The Bible speaks of 12 crowns. Crowns. There are 12 crowns mentioned in the Bible. One of these days we will study about the crowns that God has promised to his people. And we have also 12 gates for the temple during the time of Nehemiah. There are also 12 gates for the temple mentioned by Ezra. Then there are 12 apostles. And there are 12 minor prophets. There are also 12 men in the sky mentioned, which speak of the story of the gospel. So in the series of Brother Boots, he speaks about the story of the gospel in the stars. And there are 12 Hebrew lunar months. There are 12 major keys of music. And so 12 means governance. 12 months govern the year. 12 hours govern the day. 12 hours govern the night. 12 apostles govern the early church. 12 gates to the temple to govern the worshipers in the temple. 12 pillars in the heavenly temple. And 12 tribes that form a nation or a community. So the lessons and significance of the 12 tribes correspond to the kind of spiritual tribes in the body of Christ today. That is our point of interest. So kung ginatunan natin ang 12 tribes, we are trying to understand ano man ang anointing sinis ang spiritual tribes because they are also present in the uh, church today. Remember that 12 tribes came from the 12 sons of Jacob. By four mothers. By four mothers. Actually, 13 children, including Dinah. One girl. And 
um, the first mother or wife that uh, Jacob married was Leah. And then the second to mother Jacob's children was Bilha, the wife of Rachel. And the third to mother, the third group of children of Jacob was Zilpa, Leah's handmaid. And the fourth was Rachel herself, the beloved wife of Jacob, also became uh, mother of some of the sons of Jacob. So 12 sons, four mothers. And Leah, the first wife, uh, conceived and gave birth to the following sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, and Issachar, then Zebulun, and then Dinah, the daughter, all children of Leah. Rachel gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, which in the time of Jacob, he lumped up together as adopted sons to replace Joseph, making the share of Joseph two times because Joseph was the favorite of Jacob. So he gave Jacob two shares by elevating Manasseh and Ephraim to the level of son when they were just grandsons. We'll talk about that later also. We also see Bilhas sons, Dan and Naphtali, and Zilpas sons, Gad and Asher. So all in all, there were 12 sons in what is now known as the 12 tribes of Israel. And how it happened was that Manasseh and Ephraim be took the place of Joseph so that in the allotment there is no more area for Joseph but an area for Manasseh and an area for Eph Ephraim because Jacob made Manasseh and Ephraim his sons doubling the share of Joseph. One more uh, side point before we go to Isaacar. Very interesting. When the law was announced for the blessing side and the cursing side, if you obey the law, there will be blessings. If you will disobey the law, there will be curses and punishment. Six tribes were assigned to read the blessings on one mountain Six tribes were announced, were made to announce the cursing on another mountain. Mount Gerizim was the mountain of blessing. Mount Ebal was the mountain of cursing. You will read this in Deuteronomy 27. And those who were chosen to read the blessings were Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. Those who were chosen to read the curse were Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Now, it doesn't mean that the tribes were, six tribes were blessed or six tribes were cursed. No. The blessing and the cursing were to work on each other. Whoever obeys will be blessed. Whoever disobeys will be cursed. That's under the regime of the law. And six tribes were chosen to read the blessing. Six tribes were chosen to read the cursing. We are under grace already, but we will find out that the principles continue to operate. We will explain that as we go along. But if you will recall, before Jacob died, he pronounced blessings on all his 12 sons. He prophesied, actually, on his 12 sons. And uh, Judah means praise and he said that the scepter shall not depart from Judah we took this up last time so King David came from Judah because the kingly anointing was announced on Judah he produced a generation of kings and leaders Reuben the firstborn supposed to be Jacob said you shall not have preeminence because of what he did, he slept with his father's wife. But we already took up last time how Reuben was redeemed 
by the Lord, still given a place in the kingdom of God. God is one of the interesting sons of Jacob. He is what you might call the modern day scout ranger marines. This is a very fierce warrior, the Gadite tribe. Very expert warrior, soldier, military anointing, Gadites. Asher, those who are interested in agriculture will be uh, intrigued to know that Asher has a land anointing, a, an agriculture anointing, and his name means happy. Asher means happy. He, when, whenever he is around, he makes things light, and he loves to work with the soil. Okay? In the kingdom of God, we need an Asher anointing, especially in the last days. We, we need to be able to produce from the soil in view of the coming shaking and in view of the intensification of the birth pains leading to the tribulation and the great tribulation period. So there will be a place for the Asherites in the kingdom of God. Naphtali, which means to wrestle. He was also given beautiful words and so forth and so on and so forth. We will all go through them one by one. And then Isaacar is what we will take up tonight. Zebulun is the business anointing, the management anointing. He knows how to handle money and resources. And you will find out that he is always associated with Isaacar. In the course of this uh, sharing tonight, you will find out the connection between the Isaacar anointing and the Zebulun anointing. And you have, of course, Joseph and Benjamin, and we will explain that when their time comes to be explained in the study of the 12 tribes. We go to Isaacar tonight, the fifth child, Isaacar. He is the fifth son of Leah, but ninth in the birth order. He is ninth in the birth order. What does the word Isaacar mean? We got this idea, sangalan nga Isaacar, or from Genesis chapter 30, verse 18, when Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband, so she called his name Isaacar. You will remember.